Before you start modeling in 3D Studio Max, what you first of all have to do is to understand some of the basic objects that we have available to us. Now you can see in front of me I've got an awful lot of these kinds of objects. Uh, we've got a whole load over here on the left hand side, these are what are called standard primitives. And on the right hand side over here we've got some extended primitives. And you can see that the ones on the right hand side are a little bit more uh, complex than the ones that we see on the left. The ones on the left, we're just going to concentrate on those for the moment. These are the ones that you're going to end up using more on a day-to-day -day basis. So we've got a cube, which is this object here. Let me just turn on the, uh, the wireframe overlay. So this is our cube that we've got here. We've got a cylinder. We've got a sphere. Uh, we've got a teapot that we use for test purposes. And uh, probably the other one that you use most of all as well is going to be the flat plane that you can see here that I've got highlighted. The other objects that we've got over here, uh, we've got a chamfered box and we've got things like a, a chamfered cylinder and if you're doing space explosions we've got this fantastic ring wave that we can use as an explosion. Um, other sort of useful things that you can have here, we've got a, a C extent and we've also got a left extension as well. These we tend not to use so much more on a daily basis you will in fact probably find that there are three primitives that you will use on a regular basis and that's going to be these. So what I'm going to do is just briefly isolate those and we'll just have a look at them because we've cut away the rest of everything else. Let's just have a look at what these objects actually are. Now I've referred to these objects as being primitives and in actual fact they are parametric primitives is their correct term. And a parametric primitive is one that, once it's been created, you can then go to the Modify tab over here in your Command Panel, and you can change its basic parameters. So that's what we mean by parametric, is once you've created it, you can actually start to do stuff with it then. So I can actually come in, and after I've created the box, I can, if I left-click on these spinners and drag them up and down, I can change the length of the box, I can change the width, and I can also change the height as well in the same way that I can increase the number of segments on the length and on the width let's just zoom in here and on the height so all in all pretty useful I mean we can't do much with the box yet we need to do other things with it however it's still good to be able to say I'm going to create a box first of all and then I'm going to do something with it. That's pretty much what the um, what the sort of the ethos is behind 3D Studio. I've got the same sort of thing here with my sphere. I'll just pull that up. I can change the radius and I can make the radius bigger or smaller. I can change the number of segments and make them smaller or more refined. And I can even make a hemisphere. Now to make this a true hemisphere what I have to do is I have to change that hemispherical value to 0 0.5 and you can see here that what I've got now is just half a sphere and I can change that to be a squash or a chop and the difference is if I say squash then I've got a number of segments here and it tries to keep that number of segments within this hemisphere if I just say chop it stays with the same number that I had you can see there we're not increasing we're just we're just sort of chopping off if I go to squash you can see that they, the uh, the the rings, the lines around the object, tend to sort of drag out down towards the bottom. I can also, with this object, do something which is quite cool, which is slice. So we can say slice from, or slice to, and we can make this very much a sort of a, a simple object here. Now you might be thinking, well, where would this be useful to me? But in actual fact, if I turn this sort of that way, and then maybe do that with it. What you can actually do is I use these quite often for eyes, for characters like snakes or cartoon characters, and you can make them blink. So in actual fact, don't think that that's sort of this very useless thing that's just been chucked in there. In actual fact, it's quite useful. Flat planes are another one that you'll find quite useful as uh, elements that you can cast shadows onto. And again, I can change the length and I can change the width. And if I want to, I can alter the number of segments in the length and the width. I also have something here called the Render Multiplier. 
Now at the moment the scale is set to 1 and if I was to just press my teapot here and create a render you'll see that it's rendering at the size it actually is. If I set that scale to say maybe 2 it doesn't change the scale here in the viewport but when I press render you can see that it's actually rendered bigger than it was before. Again if I was to make that something comedic like 10 for example and press render you can see we've got a bigger space again. So that's quite a useful one to know about because it can actually sort of create an infinite plane for you for shadows and, and, and whatever you want to do. So that's pretty much what we're talking about when I talk about uh, parametric primitives, about parametric objects. We also have parametric shapes. We're going to talk a little bit about those later on. But in actual fact, sticking with just these shapes, these three will see you through pretty much most of what you need to know.